Hey everybody, uh, happy Friday to you. I'm going to be kicking out uh, the symbol from Rusty Gilligan. Uh, hang on just a minute uh, while I catch this up because I'm going to share it over with the page so we can all see and uh, everybody can join in. So bear with me just a second. As always, there we go. All right, now we're nice and live. Hey, Miles. Um, as I said, this is going to be the symbol from Rusty Gilligan uh, over at Maine Publishing. I'm going to get rabbit throat drop here. Um, I got this character uh, on loan from him for a little while, for like a few minutes for the card and whatnot, because he's bringing it back uh, in a, uh, a tribute book that he's got going on right now. And I am also working on writing and penciling a mini series for him. Uh, with this character and he's going to ink it and we're going to bring it back if you don't know Rusty's work he's been in the comic industry forever um, check him out you can find him at Rusty Webb you can find him as uh, Rusty Gilligan here on Facebook you can find him on YouTube and uh, other places his website uh, Rusty Ink and uh, he, he's pretty much all over the place I've known the guy for oh, decades now I feel so old um, we've known each other for at least 20 years. It's been a long time, long, long time. And um, this character was a creator-owned property that he had, and, and it actually appeared in a couple of Marvel comics uh, back in the day. And um, that would be the 90s, whenever he created it. And um, it crossed over into their books for a little while and, you know, made a couple of appearances kind of things. And then he had it at main publishing, his major uh, publishing label and had the character appear there in his own comic book. And uh, like I said, we're bringing him back. He's got a tribute book going on uh, for some charity stuff with, with, with the character featuring some old comics and uh, a couple of new pieces, you know, some reprints, and then with some new pieces in there, a new story uh, set in there. And uh, then on top of that, like I said, I'm working on a, uh, a mini series that's going to come up for him uh, with the character here pretty quick. And I, I don't know exactly how long it's going to be. I just started working on it, and we've been talking about working together for years, and we just haven't had the chance to. And uh, we both got a little time in our schedule, so we knocked a slot in there. So uh, we could do that. So you can expect that coming up here uh, in the next, oh, I don't know, um, next probably right after the new year would be the best time. Because like I said, we just started the project, and we haven't even uh, set pencil to paper yet. So uh, that'll be coming up here in the near future. And uh, I'm going to be, like I said, I'm going to be writing and penciling it, and Rusty's going to, uh, I don't know if we're going to co-write it or what yet, if he's going to throw in uh, once the scare scripts are done. But once we get a treatment ready, we're going to start knocking it out and go from there. So that project is officially underway. And uh, this thing is freaking just out there, man. I love this guy. Uh, I've been wanting to work with this character from Rusty's Gallery for a long time because of the fact that you know, it's rare to see a good patriotic character that's not a knockoff of someone else and that he has his own identity and has, you know, it's not just another Boy Scout Superman type character or Captain America type character. It's a legitimate um, personality, you know, and that that's one of the things that I've always liked about this character is he has his own personality. So, because, uh, you know, he can be... Uh, whatever he needs to be at the time. He can be a hero. He can be a grunt. You know, he can be whatever he needs to be at the time to meet whatever challenges in front of him. And I've always en enjoyed that about this character because a lot of these guys get really, really super suit strict and they just don't, uh, they don't have any life. They go really one dimensional really fast. But, um, I dig this one because of the fact that he has that range. So I'm going to adjust the camera here and adjust the light a little bit because it's getting a little dark on me. Now we can, hey, we can see him. So um, anyway, that's that's just where it's at right now. And like I said, this character is really open in that regard. And uh, 
that was one of the reasons I wanted to draw him so bad. But, uh, you know, and Rusty was really cool about it, but I wanted to make sure that, you know, I wasn't going to step on his toes, putting it in the card or anything like that. And uh, he was always just as, you know, open and cool about it as he always is. He just said, sure, no problem. That would be cool. And thanked me for it, and that was the way it went. Um, let's see. Trying to get all this balanced out here because um, – Unfortunately, most people, when they draw them, they overcount the stars and stripes here. That, that's a pet peeve. If you're ever drawing this character, make sure you go in and, and balance them out because uh, that is one of the trademarks of the character. It's design is, you know, it's true to the flag. So you have, you know, like nine major stripes here on the chest, and that's always nine major stripes. That's a cut into the peck there, not a stripe cut. So make sure you put it in there and make them nice and wide like that because they go red and white and alternate and a lot of people tend to miss that and uh the stars make sure you you know you count them out there's four across the bottom uh with one up on the shoulder that rounds it out from the chest but if you can only see the chest it goes one two three four and then it augments that way like that so um you know if you're ever doing that make sure you stay true to the character because of the fact that that's a pet peeve of um the character itself because of the fact that it doesn't look like him if you don't do it. It looks weird. Um, so make sure if you ever draw him, you know, if you're drawing him or whatever and you want to uh, give him a shot and whatnot, uh, if you ever want to draw him as a professional and you show Rusty, uh, I'll, I'll laugh at you when he says no because he'll correct you. <laughs> and he's not a stickler for anything, man. He's not a stickler for anything. He's one of the most easy it's going guys in the world. But that one, you know, respect his characters if you're going to draw them because he, he designs them that way on purpose. And I totally agree with it. It's it's one of the things that he wants a true flag on there because of the fact that the guy made his costume out of it. So uh, respect that. You know, it's a little tidbit thing like that. Um, and, and it's it's kind of like, you know, um, it, it's kind of like Cap in that regard because of the fact that, you know, he's got so many – so many stripes across the bottom in the midsection and some guys will draw 80 different layers to those abdominal stripes on his old costume and it looks goofy when you mess it up so don't do that but uh anyway i'm gonna cut in this star here so i can go back and erase it when i ink it and uh make sure he's got it all set up here because and i want to make sure the angles to the side um because I don't want it to be turned into a pentagram or anything weird like that, you know, be upside down or inverted or whatever. That would suck too. Me sitting here saying how cool it looks to make sure the stripes are right on it, and I could just see me flipping it upside down. And Rusty's like, "Hey, man, he's not satanic. Stop that." <laughs> so I'm gonna draw in this belt buckle real quick, which I always overdraw this belt buckle whenever I draw this character. I've drawn him a few times over the years. And I tell you what, every time I draw this guy, I always draw a big, huge Texas-style belt buckle on there. And maybe it's because I'm a Texas man. I don't know. You know, I'm originally from there. So maybe it's just the old, you know, belt buckle thing going on from back in the day whenever we used to wear the rest of Western gear and all that. And, you know, um, it is what it is. So <laughs> it is what it is. Um, let's see here. I got that oblique going in right there, but the way I'm doing the costume here, I'm going to put in a custom cut for this oblique because I don't want to do, um, I don't do the real, the semi-realism and I don't want to have all that mess going on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the suit segmented right here. I'm going to add like a, a divot right there. Put a divot right there, and then I'm going to go down here and add in the obliques in the back, the back side, and the latch back there as well. So we got that going on. And then I'm going to put in the old classic superhero hip right there. Ding. Okay, cool. So now you can do that with these older style characters. Like this one is a uh, Rusty has a Golden Age style, so it's very forgiving with that. Um, that aspect of it so you can do that very easily 
because he's a Golden Age guy. The character's not, but um, Rusty likes to do Golden Age to stuff, so it's got that kind of nostalgic appeal, uh, appeal to it and that feel to it. And I always like doing it this way so that it has that that classic hero look like he's going to pop out of a Norman Rockwell type painting. Not that I can draw or paint like Norman Rockwell by any means. Um, so if that's what you're expecting, please hang that hat up now because it's not happening. I wish. I love Norman Rockwell. The dude was a genius. But I am not that... Uh, I'm not that savvy with the brush, man. I'm just not. But anyway, yeah, you guys can expect a project from Rusty and I very soon because I'm going to have a blast, and I know I am because I'm thinking about the story right now, and I'm also uh, doing this. It's making it very fun for me because of the fact that uh, while I've got this going on, I, I've got the story just running through my head, and I'm having a wild time drawing this guy because I haven't drawn him probably. I haven't drawn this character in probably, oh good lord, at least at least 15 years. The dude's phenomenal, so um, I'm gonna go off and uh, knock him out here, and I have to draw a book once I get a project or two off the table. That I still have going on because I've got to color that Lone Rider book. I'm almost finished. Almost. I got the black and white proof to make sure everything printed well and showed up, but I did not get the color proof yet on that one because it's not done. And, uh, you know, I showed you guys the cover just a couple of days ago, which it did get colored. Um, but I'm waiting to finish up and touch up some color proofs that I got because I did a sampler and it's coming out really well. And for the people that told me that the colored pencils are dead and that I couldn't hand color a comic, um, you know, raspberry to you because of the fact that it did work and it worked out beautifully and I'm very happy with it. So um, I'm not going to say anything rude to anybody. It's just, it worked! Ha ha! No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, that was funny. I busted myself up with that, by the way, folks, because uh, that one was, you know, I'm not one to try to be harsh to people, and that, that was a funny for me. So it's like a big ha ha. I did it anyway, and it worked. No, we're all good. We are all good. So, just teasing. Please don't get upset with me because I'm not going to go off and razz people in a bad way. Just having fun. Just having fun. So... I don't want anybody getting butt hurt about it and pardon the the language there that's te that's a technical term. I see people get get upset about stuff like that all the time and it's crazy. Uh you know. But it's like one guy told me the other day, you know, uh, I I think it's funny because this one guy was telling me when I was checking around with my book and showing some readers and whatnot and um I have a select group of people that I let read my stuff before I put it out so that they could, you know, check it out and let me know, if, just have a second set of eyes on it or whatever. And uh, this one guy came up to me uh, just out of the blue, and uh, he happened to be in the group where I go to get to find uh, the people that I was going to, we're going to have uh, read the book. And he made this rude comment about me telling, you know, hey guys, if you if you guys are on my reading list, hit me up so that I can give you a copy of the book, you know, and show it and whatnot. And uh, I've got a book I want to have tested. And next thing I hear is this guy chiming into my private my private uh, direct messages. And he says, well, you know, I just wanted to tell you, man, I, I think you're wasting your time with that because, you know, you're doing, you're talking about doing multiple books right now. And he said, 
doing multiple books one at a time, more than one at a time in a year, is uh, a waste of time and a complete waste of it. Your uh, waste of your energy because you're spreading your content too thin and you're spreading yourself blah blah blah. And this isn't comics. This is for my my novels and my self help books and my marketing and such. And uh, I, I've got you know I've got a three ton bestseller underneath my belt here, and I've got a couple of books and stuff and whatnot. And anyway, he comes along and tells me, well, you know, you can't do more than one book a year. And I said, really? I said, well, tell me where you, what your data is on it and uh, let me know the title of your books. I would love to check them out. And turned out he hadn't even written one book, much less a bestseller or anything like that. And he's giving out that kind of advice in a writing, a writing group. And, um, you know, I, I just made an adamant point to uh, avoid him now. Because of that, eh, don't stick your nose where it doesn't belong, you know what I mean? <laughs> but that's just like the pencil thing in the comic industry. Everybody was telling me, don't use pencils because they're they're horrible. Don't use pencils. You'll never make your book complete and blah, blah, blah. And it won't, it won't transfer and it won't, uh, it, it won't uh, reproduce and da, 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 da. And I was just like, it won't, it won't, it won't, it won't, it won't. Well, guess what? It did. It did just fine. So... For those waiting for the comic book, get out there and get it when it comes out because uh, that's going to be awesome. That's going to be a fun one. I am loving this book. And I'm really digging on this character now because I get to do this character too. But I got to get uh, a mini comic that I still owe uh, finished up because I got a little under the weather and uh, didn't get that done. And I need to get, I need to get on that for Ron. My boy Ron, he's going to be checking me out here. Yeah, he's always on the show. I know he is. Uh, I know he thinks I forgot about him. But uh, he's very cool because he, he publishes anthologies, and this is going to be a story in his anthology, and I need to get off um, get off my butt and get that done because that's the one project I'm lagging on right now. And I've got to keep my word and get that taken care of so we can get the rest of this stuff going now that these books are – uh, on Amazon and uh, waiting for processing. And if you don't know about the books that are on Amazon right now, you will next week when they're processed because um, they're processing through right now, uh, you know, waiting for approval and adjustments and all that. And uh, the few people that do know about them, uh, that's awesome. Thank you guys for sharing the information and, and uh, walking through and making sure everything didn't blow up on me. But, uh, Anyway, okay, I'm going to put the red one right here. I'm going to accent some of these because I like to shade them out and whatnot and uh, make the red pop. Because if it's got the black contrasting within the stripe itself, it's going to make it look a, a little more... Um, a little more dynamic as we go along. These will be red when they're colored. And like I said, the reason I'm doing that is to add a little bit of a pop to it. Because the red one's up here on the shoulder, then it goes up down in the middle of the chest, and then it goes down underneath the ribs, and then down the old abadevis. So... And depending on who draws it, there's normally um, nine of these, nine of these sections. But some people draw them with seven. I like to draw them with nine. And I'm going to leave the blue open um, other than this crease right here for the pack. I know a lot of people like to black out the, the blue side, but I'm not going to. Not entirely, because I want it to be a bright blue, vibrant piece. And under normal circumstances, I would add a lot of shadow in here too. But, like I said, not with this character, because I want it to stay open. Because this whole side is blue.
but you guys are getting a rough cut look at how Rusty and I may do the uh, the symbol in the comic that will be forthcoming soon. So, and with this glove being red, I'm going to go over the, these gauntlets. I'm going to add some shadow right there. You like that? When I sing out like that and the, kid, the shadow just kicked in there? Did you see that? It's awesome. <laughs> it's Friday. It's Friday. <laughs> so... Oh, for all my following foodies out there uh, that ask about uh, recipes and stuff from me, which is a new fad thing now apparently to ask me about food, um, I got some flatbread, uh, the uh, 365 flatbread crust. We got to try some. Um, I went over to Whole Foods uh, the other day just to do a walkthrough, you know, kind of hang out and do some walking through and some uh, a little bit of counter shopping kind of thing because I wanted to get out of the house. And I got uh, some of this 365 flatbread pizza crust that they have. And the stuff is phenomenal. Uh, it cooks up in like 10 minutes. And it's just a heat and eat type of thing. And it gets crisp, but it stays um, soft, bread-like. So it's soft. But it gets like a little crispy edge on it. And um, I put in... I got some homemade, uh, well, I didn't get homemade. I got fresh-made pesto from um, from the guys there that I know. They mixed some up for me because uh, there's some people there that we know that just use this stuff all the time. And I got some fresh pesto, and, some, and I made some fresh pizza sauce at home. Now, I did make that. And uh, I put a light glaze of sauce on there and spread the pesto on there so the herbs and stuff would mix in. And then I put some fresh uh, mozz that I took. It was sliced, and I stretched it and uh, tore it up into pieces, tore it up into small pieces so it melted all over everything. And then we put some uh, really good quality pepperoni on there. And uh, I just had to salt it just a little bit. And I tell you what, that was it, man. I didn't have to put anything else in there. Uh, no, no garlic, no other seasoning, just the pesto and the sauce and the fresh parm. And, and um, I put some fresh parm on it, uh, for, for fresh grated parm. I put some um, fresh mozz and fresh cheddar on there. And it took like, it literally, it took like 10 minutes. And when, it, when the oven went off, it was ready to eat. And we gave it a minute to set so it wouldn't uh, buckle you know, so so the ingredients were set. Oh my, good lord, that stuff was good. The pizza was phenomenal. Now, granted, it's very expensive to make it that way, um, unless you use the ingredients and other stuff. Because I'll be using it with um, some other stuff, because you can't use the whole big log of, uh, you know, the whole big block of uh, fresh mozz and stuff at one time. It'll kill you, because uh, it's like a pound. But, um, you know, the fresh cheddar and stuff like that, you can use that in other things. And some of the other sauces and stuff, I'm going to make a, a, uh, uh, a parm for uh, some other stuff, you know. So I got that block going on and not wasted, and we'll use it for a while. But, uh, yeah, if you're into food and stuff and you want something, you want some phenomenal pizza that tastes totally different than anything that you can get at, um, you know, a pizza place, and you're willing to spend a little money for it and do some like nice in-home dining, I tell you what, that that is mind blowing, mind blowing. I'm telling you, it is good stuff. And uh, we made two of them, and because two come in the pack, so we cooked them both. And what ended up happening was, is I had that uh, that second one wrapped up after it cooled. I had it wrapped up in foil and let it set. While, while I ate dinner and after dinner, I wrapped it up and put it in the fridge. And I tell you what, it tastes even better today. And it is freaking nuts how good it is. But I'm a fresh foodie anyway. I, lo I love 
uh, fresh parm, you know, like uh, fresh parm for stuff, which I keep talking about that all the time. I, I use a lot of fresh um, herbs and pestos all the time because I'm a diabetic. I can't eat just anything because it's full of sugar. But the fresher, the better. And um, I tell you, man, that that stuff is just it's killer. It's killer. I love it. Of course, I eat pesto on about I, I eat fresh pesto on just about anything because it's all my favorite herbs ground up into one pack, you know, into one um, a, a soft green paste. And I tell you what, it's it spreads onto everything. But um, you know, sandwiches, um, just about anything you want. I do that with uh, green avocado sauce too. I keep that handy pretty well too because of the fact that I love that stuff. And I wouldn't eat guacamole forever. I would never eat guacamole, but now I finally eat guacamole. I tell you what, man, I just had a um, – it, it got the, the – my taste buds, my palate, would always ping off for the, um, the tang or the bitterness right when you eat an avocado. And uh, I would always catch that sour in my palate, and I just couldn't eat it, man. Just could not do it. And everybody was trying to tell me, you know, how smooth and creamy and blah, blah, blah it is. And it's great. And, da, 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 da. and uh, you know, with my family, I'm trying to get over uh, a risk of gallbladder problems because of uh, not that I'm going to lay out my whole medical history here. But, <clears throat> you know, my grandmother lost her gallbladder and, um, you know, uh, my mom and my brother are looking at having trouble with theirs and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just, eh, I don't want that. And avocados are really, really good for absorbing a lot, a lot of those problems and putting the right fatty acids in your system to uh, absorb that so you don't get gallstones and end up losing your, losing or killing your gallbladder. And uh, that's one of those things I wanted to fix preemptively. I'm not having any trouble with it, thank goodness. But, you know, but uh, I, I eat a lot of healthier foods because of that choice of preemptively striking against negatives that I have in my food system. And, you know, um, if it comes out of a box, you pretty much should stay away from it. And I'm wholeheartedly addicted to cereals. Not sweet cereals necessarily, just cereals, period. I love cereals. And um, I have to counter that so that I don't kill myself. So, uh, you know, no more cards. Sorry, this is the last one because Brad Linders died because he ate too much cereal and didn't take care of himself. So, uh, yeah. It's that kind of thing, man. And you guys that know me, you know I wear this. You know I'm, I'm a person that keeps pretty private. But as I go on and get more and more information out there, it's just, you know, I've decided I've hit an age to where I'm okay. You know, I'm okay with people talking and nobody really cares. And uh, you know, if you're if you're a foodie like me, try that out. Try the pizza, and uh, you know, stay healthy. Get into that stuff. Because there's so much more flavor in that food, too. And that's the cool thing about it is, is I can taste way more stuff now because of the fact that I've cut out all that junk, you know. And um, I went from working 80-hour weeks, 80-hour-plus weeks uh, in law enforcement into sitting at a desk, drawing and writing and consulting and, you know, I had to walk stairs all night and, uh, you know, move constantly when I was in, working at the jail for the sheriff's office. And I tell you what, it, it's a totally different ball game in comparison to what I do now. And I might walk 5,000 steps a day now, you know. I mean, for most people, that's a lot. But for me, that's about a third, maybe, of what I was originally doing. So... That's one of those things. You got to stay in shape and you got to get out there and eat right and do the exercise and do the right thing, you know. And uh, people ask me how I stay in shape and work so so many hours. It's because I put in the time every morning to do my workout, you know, seven days a week, just like everybody else. One foot in front of the other. That's how. But uh, anyway. Going to put in this shadow right here. And finish this up so <clears throat> I know we're hanging out and whatnot but uh, 
I'm going to finish this card up. Now, I know you guys have been watching over on the YouTube channel, too. I've been getting a lot of requests to post new stuff. So uh, I'm doing that uh, this weekend as well as releasing these four books. And I am not kidding. I, I am releasing four full-fledged self-help books that I've been working on the last couple weeks. And uh, <clears throat> I wrote them last weekend or weekend before last, and I did the edits last week. Then I got the approvals for the covers, got those in place. Uh, which I designed myself, and uh, got some feedback this week from people that I had read them, and uh, <clears throat> now I'm going to be posting those on uh, Amazon. They're getting approved as we speak, so once they're all out there, you guys will know because I'll start promoting about them. <clears throat> and don't worry, it's not going to be a buy my stuff campaign. It's just going to be, you know, uh, notification of say, hey, you know, here they are. If you like them, cool. That kind of thing. I don't really push a lot I don't have to you guys know where my stuff is when you want it so and if you don't ask me and I'll tell you I'll happily tell you where it's at so you can go get your copy of it if you want but yeah I'm not gonna cry about it if you don't so now I've got this coming up here kind of a three-dimensional pop right there and so you guys know who it is that is the symbol <clears throat> rusty thanks buddy i appreciate it jay thanks for stopping on man why am i getting some sad faces kevin's giving me sad faces what is that about <laughs> Oh, man. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, yeah, <laughs> that sidetracked me. Sorry. But, um, yeah, very cool stuff. We got him knocked out here. I'm going to ink him up and color him. Um, we're going to get that. We're going to get together and get that, that book out for you guys. And, uh, like I said, we're probably going to look at a mini series. That will be the fastest way. But, um, anyway, I appreciate it. Have a great weekend. I will see you guys tomorrow with another card. Um, I don't know which one I'm going to do, either Saturday or Sunday, just to give you guys a heads up. I don't know what I'm going to do one day, but but one of the two days I'm going to do a Savage Dragon. Uh, I've been getting requests for that and just wanted to throw it out there. I am going to be doing the Savage Dragon card uh, that everybody keeps requesting me. So, uh, but uh, anyway, that's it. Say hi. Be kind. Uh, smile at somebody. Walk up and shake their hand. Do something nice for them. Uh, be civil, you know. It's going to be a lot cooler place than you got it when you when you leave it if you do. So talk to you guys tomorrow. Take care.